Hello and welcome Aussie Tech Heads, episode 263 and the 10th of November, Thursday night, once again, live.thesecrethub.com if you want to join us live and watch the live stream record. Woohoo, yeah, baby. Um, oh, and so what are we going to do? Let, let's, let's start from the top. I've lost my notes, but let's start from the top. Um, hello, Eric. Hello, Mr. Goodman. How do you do? Good, thank you. And back from the wilderness and the jungle and looking like he's just been out there with that beard of his <laughs> is Will. It's Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> Man Friday. Uh, How you doing, Will? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Still uh, running what? around the circles like a one-legged cat. Oh, one-legged cat. Running around the circles very slowly. So what's been... <laughs> I just said cat. Yeah, so what's been going on? You've um, you've uh, moved house and you've got some good broadband. Yeah, finally moved back into a, a cable area, so I've got I've got the premium speed pack. So I get I average about ninety five meg down and one and a half up. So that's pretty good, and that's with Optus cable. That's good. That's Optus cable with uh, that's future proofed. So once NBN rolls out to the area, I automatically switch over. I haven't got to pay anything extra. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. So they'll come and install the little MBN box and so forth on your... Yep. Pretty your... much, yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice work. And uh, can we ask how much is that plan costing? That's a big if. That's if we ever get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. true. If the true. MBN ever comes to this area. Um, I'm on... What am I on? 129 a month for the Optus cable, which is a terabyte oh, download geez. limit. Jeez. Um, Right. Plus twenty dollars a month on top of that for the premium speed, so it's one hundred and forty nine a month. Wow, wow! Including phone? Uh, yeah, including including unlimited oh, home phone. Yeah, see, there you go. That's where you save your dough right now. Yeah, but we don't use that, so it doesn't matter. No, no, I don't use it. Either. <laughs> but that's but not... if you had to. At least Although you... I sent a fax. <laughs> <laughs> you sent? Oh, you sent a fax. <laughs> I sent a fax. <laughs> I feel so old. Where you send the fax to? Back to 1984? <laughs> no, I sent it to a Queensland government. Oh, there you go. 1984. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> so you sent it to Joe um, Milky Peterson. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, Joe's going to sign it and fax it back to you. Yeah. Um, now, so, yes, yeah, so that's good. That's good news, Will. So 1.3 up. And so, obviously, a terabyte... You got a terabyte downloads a month because obviously you had a at what is it one, what a hundred meg down, yeah that's pretty yeah. fast. You'd need that sort of space, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, you can tend to download things very quickly and not notice, and actually download it four or five times because you didn't think it downloaded. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So uh, I don't know what 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 can we give an example of a download a MP3 probably take what a song probably take about oh ten seconds or something. Well, the last Aussie Tech Heads podcast, which is what. 60, 60 odd 65 70 meg yeah 60 meg yep downloaded in about oh, by the time i click download allow this to download and open it was done <laughs> that's pretty good i'm so jealous Sorry. how come you've got that up there <laughs> look i went to the optus website and you know what they're not around here so bugger them but anyway i, I can yeah. get where i am can you can you so you can get that sort of speed i, I get I can get uh, cable, Telstra and Optus for I am. Yeah, right. In HDSL, obviously. Oh, but you can't get Optus yeah. cable. No, no, I can. I can get Optus cable and I can get Optus ADSL or cable or and Telstra ADSL or cable. Well, that's what kind of annoyed me, actually, because I could have Telstra ADSL 2 or Optus cable. So. Yeah, look, you, you'll yeah. find that 150 bucks or whatever. Look, it is worth it. 1.3 up, that's worth it for sure. Um, yeah, well, that's it. That makes uploading an audio podcast now. I can upload it in 10 minutes. Mm, so. Mm. so welcome back, Will. Welcome back, Will, and welcome to the lounge. Welcome to the lounge. You join us every Thursday night, uh, boys and girls in the lounge there. Uh, you can call in live through the show, our Skype Aussie Tech Head, and if I'm looking at the screen, I'll be able to see you calling and I'll pick you up. Uh, audio only on the Shoutcast on the Shoutcast uh, system. Just search for Aussie Tech Heads. Uh, live video once it's recorded on YouTube. YouTube.com slash The Secret Hub. You can have a look there. Um, yeah, so there we go. Thanks to Brad and Tech Webcast, who's replayed before the show at 7 o'clock Queensland time. So it's Queensland time, people. Queensland time, which is uh, 7 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock our time. It's 8 o'clock New South Wales and 8 o'clock Victorian. Okay, where are we going to start 
tonight. Uh, let me pick a one out here. Can we start with, uh, how about the Apple Mac Store? Having a few um, problems. Well, did have a, not a problem, but um, malicious piece of software. Apparently, uh, someone wrote some nasty software, stuffed it in the Mac Store, in the App Store, for the iPhone and the iPad App Store. Oh, and is this the one that the guy pointed it out to them and he got his developer's license revoked? Is that the same one? That's the one. Same story? Yes, yes, right. that's him. Yeah, so what's happened is the um, the code was designed to look like a stock price tracker, uh, but was also able to steal data. Experts said that the proof of concept program was a significant threat to the app store. Apple declined, declined to comment. It also removed the app and barred the developer from its store. So why can't he just um, open up another account in another name? Oh, probably could, but I think he's probably making a point. Mm. The in Insta stock app took advantage of a recent update to Apple's, Apple's mobile operating system, which allowed non-approved code to be added to the installed apps for the first time. There you go. Apparently, this guy, in 2009, he also identified a bug in the iPhone's text messaging system that allowed attackers to gain remote control over, over the devices. He has um, since exposed other vulnerabilities in Apple's Mac and mobile platforms. So, obviously, Apple... Uh, Probably not liking him too much. What if they hire him? <laughs> they should hire him. Well, get him yeah, up there. I think they've got a. I think they've got a policy against hiring people to try to destroy you. Yeah, but still. Funny that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a. But you know, I don't know. He, he's obviously pretty smart. He's a, he's a smart dude. <clears throat> Smarter than me, anyway. So um yeah so uh but uh, sticking with an Apple story. Apparently Telstra, they're going to supply iPad 2 next week. So um, mm. iPad 2, Telstra plans to... Do well, they supply, they supply it by subscription, is that what you mean? Yeah, by plan, via a plan. Oh, that's brilliant. Mm. But I don't know, like my... I don't know, did, you've got an iPad, Eric. Is yours uh, 3G? Yes, it is. And it's on a. it's got a chip in it? Got a chip in it, prepaid. I don't no plan. Right, right. Yeah, because I know. Uh, like, I don't know if, if actually a a three G one's worth it. Not for me anyway. Because I just tether it to the phone. Um, so I don't know. As long as you don't want. The only difference is you, you when you tether, you do have a limited speed, um, which is a lot slower than native. Oh, is it? The the three G network. Yeah. Yeah, it's going yeah, to be slower. You're going to lose something. But. Depends on what you're doing. If you're only doing Facebooking and oh, low right. bandwidth stuff, it's fine. Yeah, that's right. Well, mine goes all right. But anyway, users are able to buy each model outright for seven hundred and twenty dollars for the sixteen gig, eight forty for the thirty-two, or nine thirty-six for the sixty-four. Now, these are pretty comparable to what you would expect to pay in the Apple Store. I think one of them might be one dollar cheaper. One of those versions a dollar cheaper. So, um, it's it's you know pretty much the same. Much of a muchness. So, yeah, so everything's going to plans these days, isn't it? Computers on plans, iPads on plans. and uh... Yeah, I think it's it's a certainty thing more so. Like if you offer somebody something they want and the chance to pay it off, they're more, especially with the way the, the economy supposedly is at the moment, um, there's more of a chance that they'll fork out 30, 40, 50 bucks a month instead of 500 bucks up front, you know. Mm. So, yeah, which is I true. think it's. Yeah, so yeah. by the end of the time, like you send your 50 bucks every month, and by the end of the time, I suppose, I don't know. Yeah, well, it probably works for some people. It doesn't probably work for me, but uh, I just tether it. Yeah, and that's a lot of people are going to get the prepaid and pay their 30 bucks a month prepaid anyway, in which case, you might as well get a subscription and get the iPad for. Yeah, well, that's right. Mm. Uh, apparently, Frosty, Frosty, hello, Frosty, in the lounge. He's just gone that the uh, the three G has the GPS in it. I thought the correct because mm. so th they're combined on the same chip. The three G, the the um, digital chip and the GPS chip are the same. Right, right. The same, uh, same board, whatever. Same you processor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the the Pando pad that I had didn't have 3G, so didn't have GPS. But the new ZTE pad that I finally got um, has both. So. Did you get your Pendo yeah. Pad 2 yet? Yeah, the ZTE. Oh, how's um, that work for you? 
after they sent me the pendo pad again. Yes. And then I rung them up and told them that that wasn't the right thing. And then they made me send it back. And it sat at the post office for 11 days before they decided to check their mail. Um, and then two weeks later, they sent me the Z- ZTE pad. So I don't, it's only take. I've only had it, what, a week and a half? And I ordered it, t- what, two months ago? Yeah, right. <laughs> nice. Nice work. <laughs> Now I've got I've got a little up the story before we before we um before, before we ask anyone else if they got any stories I got a little up the story um, Optus from last Sunday started charging mobile phone customers in one minute blocks don't know if you guys heard about that yep. got a letter oh yes but is that going to worry you do you think one minute blocks no. well just about every other carrier's one minute block anyway and but not only they're doing it with their mobiles they're doing it with their home phones as well. Oh, really? Jeez. But uh, given that most people are on $500 worth of calls or unlimited calls in the case of most Optus home phones that are bundled, they're unlimited calls anyway, Mm. uh, length is more or less irrelevant. And the main reason I can think that they're doing it is actually to save processing power at their end. Because if you only monitor a line once a minute, instead of once every 30 seconds, where well, you can have twice as much capacity with half as much hardware, so. Yeah, okay. If that just, yeah, right here. Um, so what, so, but, but if they're monitoring the line, they'd be able to, why wouldn't it just, um, at the end of the call, wouldn't it just report back how long the call was and charge like that? Why would it? Reporting, it's probably reporting. It's, it, it would be, I think Will's right, it would be um, tabulating every 30 seconds, or, or in this case now every minute, rather than every 30 seconds. I think it's just lessening the load on their infrastructure. I'm yeah. Yeah, right I yeah. Don't think that makes sense to me. They're not really going to make any mo- any more money out of it because I mean, they might make a couple of dollars here and there. But, I mean, as it was, you know, calls up to 30 seconds, which I was up to the 30-second block, and anything 31 seconds and over went to a minute anyway. So, so <laughs> apparently... money paid. That's where they'll make money. The, the prepaid people will probably um, reach no, out cause if, more often. Well, no, because most of those uh, um, unlimited calls are on certain amount, a certain amount of calls rather than a certain length of a call. Well, apparently, well, so Telstra started charging its mobile calls and fixed line uh, national and international calls in one minute blocks in March. Now, this move is estimated by one analyst at the time to be worth $100 million extra a year. For the company, um, Optus customers. I've got a I've got a, a Telstra limit of seven fifty, and it might have I might I might have been checked through, but since the changes, it might be five fifty. I'm still under my cap, so it makes yeah. sense. But I mean, well, Telstra's a bad example anyway because their per minute rate is so expensive anyway. So apparently, Optus Optus customers on plans, including the forty nine dollar Optus cap, will pay a dollar five per minute, which is a thirty cent increase. Then um, Optus net profit rose four percent to one hundred eighty two million. So it's that's Optus Group. So, the, as in so they actually put their the price up as well as increase the cap. Sounds like it. Hmm. Oh, they've all got to make money, haven't they? Oh, well, you know, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not with them. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. I'm not even with them. So, um, yeah. Oh, you are. Sort of. By default, sort of. Yeah, in a in a. Again, three or virgin or something. Yeah, virgin in an unholy matrimonial way. Still a virgin. <laughs> well, virgin used to be their own network. So. Yeah. All right. Has any any you guys got any stories? Well, there's another Optus story quickly. We'll get it over and done with. Just we're talking at the start of the show about the uh, NBN. Um, Optus has actually finally released their NBN broadband pricing. Um, Optus have? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. What is it? Um, they start at $60 a month, depending on what, you, what you're going for. But $60 a month will get you 120 gig. Um, that's naked. Or I think it's an extra $20 on top of that to add your phone and everything. Um, or you, seventy dollars a month is one hundred and fifty gig, or eighty dollars a month is five hundred gig, or the bundle that I'm on now 
including the home phone and the high speed will be 100 and, uh, 129 same price as it is now for a terabyte and that's up to um, 100 meg down which I'm pretty much getting now but 40, up to 40 meg up which will be the cool thing yeah that's the main thing yeah it's the up that you want isn't it the up speed the down speed I'm not too you know I'd be happy with 30 down yeah I just want to be up yes I know um, and I actually found I'd out I'd be happy with 5 up in all honesty <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. I actually found how Optus make their cable, prem their premium speed packs, what they actually do is actually tie your connection into four lines. So you physically have four points at the exchange that your data travels through, which is why your data is four times quicker. Is this so, for cable or NBN? For cable. Um, that's how they get the fast speed, so... So when is MBN slotted for your area, Will? Uh, it's slotted for Ipswich, but I don't know specifically about Bundamba. Hmm. Well, I know. Uh, um, what is it when this? As I said last week, I'm I'm hoping that the um, if we if the Gold Coast wins this games, the Commonwealth Games, which I think the announcement is Saturday morning, I think. Oh, mm. So dreaming, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, look, fingers and toes you crossed. Know, you know, I'll tell you what's going to happen. They're going to win it. And then they'll be announced. Uh, we're putting in 1.5 megabits. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, what about all this? L uh, what about all this LTE stuff that's carrying, not going around? Why don't you have a go at that, Eric? Nah, I'll no. wait. Well, there are no phone. I'm not going to. Well, I'm not going to get a, an Android phone just to use LTE. I can tell you that right now. Mm. For the average person, you won't notice the speed increase anyway. Um, so how do you have you? Have you noticed I'm your three G speeds? Three G on the phone is perfect for me. I don't need anything faster. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, it's fast enough on my yeah, phone too. On a on a phone, you don't because the device itself can't really do much with it. On a powerful tablet or on a three G enabled laptop, hmm. yeah, maybe. Or, or or a um a nice massive four gigabyte gaming machine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how how is the how is this new speed will how's this big pool of speed affected your internet experience? Um, I haven't really had much of a chance to do much with it because I've been having other issues with the internet like reliability and things because as most people know, F switch basically went underwater at the start of the year. So there's a lot of the exchanges and a lot of the, the trigger points that haven't been fixed yet. So, but um, it's kind of good because it means now, for example, I can be doing a, my podcast, uh, either Talkback Tech or I'm actually doing all the, the bulk st uploading, streaming, or mm. even just doing um, Aussie Tech Heads where I'm just basically sending a video signal. But the speed's fast enough that I can be doing that and Sonia can be out in the lounge room streaming a movie yeah, nice. off the net. Yeah, you know, nice. so and and it doesn't affect anything. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what it's all about, isn't it? And uh, so, and it's good have you noticed your Windows updates too? <laughs> your Windows updates takes like thirty seconds now. Have you noticed? <laughs> have you noticed um, web pages loading any faster or anything like that? Uh, yeah, but mainly that's a lot to do with my ping because my ping's only nine milliseconds now. Mm. So, so ah. my... <laughs> I think Eric got his down to eight, didn't you, at one stage? Eight at one stage. I'm, I'm sitting on ten at the moment. Oh, yeah. Mine's on nine because I haven't optimized my router yet. Oh, Once look. I change that, it will come down. That's ADSL and cable. So AD, my ADSL connection is nine, and my and my uh, cable connection is about twelve. I got. That's mine. not bad for cable for ADSL. I got so. mine down to fifty-one. What's well, Telstra? <laughs> There's no lag with Telstra. That's what I like about it. Yeah, so. fifty-one. That, but it's know. funny. YouTube still it's... won't load. Like you'll still get to a page where it'll load halfway through the video and stop. So yeah, right, right. It doesn't matter how good your speed is if the site you're going to is flaky. <laughs> now, now, from all the all the knowledge in the room, uh, if I if I change the Telstra ADSL two, would my ping yep. improve? Yep. Yes. Even though absolutely, it'll go down, go down to nine. But my oh well, it'll go down. <laughs> but my um. My speed probably won't improve because of my distance. My speed will be the same. But you reckon the ping will be better? Well, yeah. remember your trace route? Yes, you're going through about 
30 different IP addresses before you got to Google. Yes, I know. Once you hit Telstra, you won't have that problem. So that'll bring your ping down. You go to about two or three. Oh, look, I'm gonna, mm. I'll re-look at it tomorrow. <laughs> what do you do? Get off your backside. Mm. Or get on your backside. Look, get sit in front of the computer. <laughs> yeah, look, I have looked at them. I've, I look at them every now and then. I am pretty proactive. I think that I just, with the plans and everything, I think it's, it's just going to cost more money to do it. That's the only thing. So... But yeah. you know, so I've got, I've got to weigh it all up. If it is it worth it? But, um, well, even if you went Optus, Adis, or whoever, no, it's Telstra in your area, isn't it? Uh, where in my area? Mm. Yeah, Telstra. Yeah. So yeah, all right. Uh, okay. Anyway, Eric, did you have any stories? Ah uh, yes. Adobe killing Flash. Mm. King oh, is dead. Steve Long Jobs is King. clapping in the grave. I tell you what, when they say he's the smartest guy in the room and he's always right, he's always right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you finished the book yet? No, I'm nearly done. I'm yeah. nearly done. I'm up to part three, uh, chapter thirty out of fifty-four. So right. twenty chapters to go. Oh yeah, nice. No, I'm done. Twenty. I'm up to the bit. I'm up to the bit. He's in two thousand and nine, and he's sick. Oh, he's got okay. cancer. I'm up to the sad bit. Oh no. Um, they should have. They should have recorded him singing a song or something, you know, and put it in oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, Jobsy, <laughs> sing a song. You know what he would have said? Well, I can't say it here. It's a kiddie show. <laughs> so now, tell me about Flash. What's going on with Flash? In a stunning move, software developer Adobe is reported to be throwing in the towel when it comes to getting multimedia plat- platform Flash to run on mobile devices. So that's finished. Mobile oh, devices. Oh, only oh. on mobile devices for now, but I would suggest that it won't be long. Once HTML5 gets a bit of momentum, I would suggest that um, that'll probably go to on the, on the desktops. So the upcoming, um, yes, the upcoming. According f- to a report, Z, uh, Z, Z, ZDNet, Z-Net. Uh, the company is holding development, Z-Net. holding development on future mobile versions of Flash for Android and Research in Motion's playbook. So that one person that's got a playbook will be very disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, the they will be. Flow to Android's Android device makers who have long touted Flash compatibility as a key competitive advantage over Apple's iPhone and Apple. So Ado- Adobe, yeah, will now focus on the universally supported HTML5 and Adobe Air. That's still kicking along. Um, yeah, Adobe Air, will yeah, be all right. Yeah, H- now Adobe has said HTML5 is now universally supported on major mobile devices, in some cases exclusively. This makes HTML5 the best solution for creating and deploying content in the browser across mobile, plat- mobile platforms. So, yeah, well, Microsoft are getting rid of um, their Silverlight. solution. Silverlight, they're getting rid of that because they've jumped on the um, HTML5. But it's good. Rock. It's good that there's one one platform, like. Yes, you're, you're, I'm glad they're all sort of jumping on it because mm. then it's less confusing for us. Yeah, well, Flash has always been a dog, hasn't it? Oh, it's like, a pig. Yeah, Seriously. It, it always has been. But it's always been easy to program in, yeah, which is why they use it. Program and easy to, de- to deploy. Mm. But, um, but I mean, HTML5 is quite powerful. Did any of you guys do the uh, go to google.com and type in dual backflip? No. No? What happens? <laughs> oh, yeah, it well, doesn't that... work in... IE, but it works in all the other browsers. Okay, here we but go. Yeah, if, you actually, if you actually go to google.com. Let me go to google.com. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's still working. Let me just go and check. Oh, for crying out loud. Say like Google, not Google's. And you should be able to type in do uh, a oh, do a barrel roll, sorry. And usually you've only got to get as far as do A, and it will actually... On, let's have a go. Do a barrel roll. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool. So that's just a, a you know HTML5 code. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, why want to do it again? Does it only do it once, or does it do it from? No, the no. Point? Just type it in again. Okay, here we go again. Do a barrel <laughs> okay for those that on the podcast the the actual page <laughs> actually the page actually does a f- flip and now when the when the page finishes you'll start barking like a dog Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, you, you watch that too. 
I'm gonna throw up. You watch that too many times, and you'll you'll um, use Chrome as your default browser. That's what's happened to us all. That's how they did it. <laughs> That's why they did it. Yeah. <laughs> you watch it a couple more times, and you will not notice the 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 destruction of Google Notebook. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, Google Notebook. I'm upset about that. I know. We discovered. We discovered. Well, I only discovered before the show that Google Notebook is no longer after tomorrow. Finished. Gone. And if, if people who don't know who in the lounge or listening on the podcast or watching on the live stream, Google Notebook is how we prepare for the show. Yes. And we collaborate all our notes in there. And so the fact that it's not there means we have to find another solution. Well, the worst part is we just trained all the minions how to use it, and we've got to retrain the minions in something else. <laughs> I know, I know. So <laughs> if anyone's got... train anybody. You can train yourselves. If anyone's got a good <laughs> idea of what we can use in its place, uh, is Evernote any good? I don't know. Something like that. Whatever's e- nice and easy to copy and cut and paste stories from web pages into. Probably have to just look at Google Docs, I, I would imagine. Um, Google Docs. You can you can collaborate on Google Docs, but it doesn't have that left-handed side menu that mm. we like. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Uh, I think uh, Remember the Milk, has that got a note functional feature? I don't know. But there's a few around. Remember the Milk's gone. I think it's paid only now. Oh, Do they have a... dirty scoundrels. How come they want to make money? Uh, but anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> I use Evernote. They? Evernote's pretty cool. <laughs> how dare they? They've upgraded the chocolate milk only. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm, after the show, I'm going to go into the next room and kick head in the guts and see if he's got any ideas about um, <laughs> notebooks. <laughs> he's asleep tonight, by the way. He had a big night last night. Unfortunately, he won't be on tonight. Sorry to say. He's having a snooze. That's all right. Mm, that's all right. He's having a break. He gets a bit excited, you know, every now and then. <laughs> um, oh, he's, hey? he's off his tree. He is off his tree. He's off his little head tree. Uh, any other story? Um, Will, did you have anything else? All right. Let's, um, the, the thing in the geek world, I guess, is Google Plus still, even though it's open now, it's still, you know, restricted to the, the uh, talented, in, you know, technologically savvy people of the world. Um, as of Monday, they rolled out this, the, uh, the thing to allow businesses now. So you can actually have a business Page. Um, relationship basically in, in Google Plus now, which before they were telling people not to start that up because they were going to introduce it and any business accounts that were actually started, they uh, fairly quickly actually shut down. Hmm. Um but now they have actually allowed that. And I noticed that uh, both Chewing the Fat and Aussie Tech Eds have yes, I, I page up. I, look, I, so, I re- yes, I created mine this afternoon just as you guys were talking. Yeah, well, same here. Mine went up this afternoon. And look, I haven't gone into it fully yet, but I, I did notice that after I created it, I had a, I had a, a, a history <laughs> of things already oh. there. So I don't know who put them up. And I think Brad, he um, posted, he plus one, the few of the previous episodes episodes just to fill the page out so that's good cheers um yeah so google's yeah so, yeah, so google started started allowing businesses and brand and brands to set up their own page uh it says the company it wants to it says the facility will help companies and cam ca- and campaigns engage with the audience apparently there's a bit of cyber uh page squatting going on and verified pages actually say verified up at the top of the page it'll be verified this is a verified page. Uh, if you go to Facebook and you'll, the Facebook page, you'll see what I mean. There's a Facebook one there. Uh, now, Burberry, Barcelona Football Club and the Muppets are some of the organisations taking part in the launch. I know National Australia Bank, they've got one, NAB. They've got one uh, page already there. And they, they do look all right. Like, it, it's good to see that they, these guys take time to, to, to produce a nice-looking page, which means that I've got to do the same. I've got to sit down and, and try and do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and by the way, the web page has begun. The new web page has begun. Again. 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 That's right. Again. <laughs> I've got 50 bucks with Will on a, on a penny board. It won't be long before you get another virus. No. No, I'm doing things. I've got passwords with, with underscores and asterisks in it, and oh, I've got everything oh, going yeah. on. I've got everything going on. No one knows how to crack those. No. Nah. <laughs> 
It says it's very strong, the password. Very oh, strong. Did you check with Steve Gibson? No, I didn't, but I might send it to him and ask him if he's if it's all right. Yeah. No. Can oh, you have a look at this password? And... Security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shields up. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. Oh, no. <laughs> Quick, down to the basement. Down to, with my bloody, what do you call it? With my... the world pack. No, quick, don't forget the XT. Whatever you do, bring the XT with you. <laughs> yeah, and the HP calculator from 1965. That's right. <laughs> the PB100 and the Micro B. The Vic 20. <laughs> Uh, if you're listening, Steve, we love you, mate. <laughs> He's probably got alarms go off when someone rings his doorbell. <laughs> someone mentions his name, and <laughs> He's got secure. He's got security code encoded into his doorbell chime. <laughs> Fingerprint scanner and <laughs> for yes. his front door. It takes him four days to get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Get Smart Max Smart's front door, but just all bloody codes and security things. But anyway, um, G Google Plus Pages. Um, the page owners can monitor how many people are clicking through to their Google Plus page and where they clicked from, which is uh, probably pretty cool. Uh, Google I says... I give my stats if anyone ever clicked on it, which they haven't. <laughs> I'll click on it for you in a minute. Google says that more than 40 million people have already opened an account with its network. This is not pages, this is just plus. And Facebook still has more than 10 times the amount. Well, they've got more than 10 times. Haven't they got like 700 million or something? Well, they got a few bit. They got a bit. I know that. Good old Facebook. <laughs> got a few bit. They got a few bit. <laughs> They're all right. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> you missed. You missed it, didn't you, Will? You missed all the fun and frivolity. Of the and I thought I was having trouble getting back in the swing of things. <laughs> <laughs> You've well, only had a week. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's long enough. That's long enough. Uh, all right. So, so every you've got um, 20, 20 chapters to go in Steve Jobs. Uh, have you have I you have. have you lined up any other listens to your favourites? Audible dot com. Go to uh, the book is called Survivors, a novel of the coming collapse. Very, it's very, uh, very happy go lucky story as you can tell from the title. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> how do you um, how do you search for potential listens? By the way, like I search based on my interest. Right. So I might type a search term, for example, uh, Armageddon. Yep. For right. example, or technology, um, security, hacking. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. So I, I know just this is probably a little bit off track, but did you guys um, did you see that there was some asteroid that that was like two football fields past close between us and the moon the other morning, and they reckon that. You know, on yeah, its way on its way back in six hundred million thousand billion years, it might hit us. But, um, yeah, and they were going to call Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck, <laughs> yes. and they were going to get Steve, Style, Steve, uh, Steve Tyler from Aerosmith to start singing his song, but they didn't need to. <laughs> but that is, is that like does that seem close to you? Is that too close? That's very close. That's very close. Yeah, it is very very close. But obviously, they weren't worried about it. No, they they had projected and transjected and and all this sort of stuff and measured with their compasses and protractors, and yes, it was going to hit us. Yeah, I'm sure they were using their protractors. They had their protractors <laughs> out. <laughs> Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, so anyway, what are you? What do you got? Survivors. Just, Survivors. Yep. A novel of the coming collapse. Now this is the public publisher's summary. Blah. America is in the thrall of a full scale. Socio-economic breakdown. I thought they were already in that. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. The stock market plummets. Hyperinflation destroys the value of the dollar and the population. Unprepared for hardship. Panics. Practically overnight, the high technology infrastructure and chains of supply collapse and the wholesale rioting and looting in every city. Law enforcement, transportation, electricity, fuel and medical supplies are all in the past now as the country staggers beneath its own weight. I tell you what, that's not far from the truth. <laughs> no. So is is this yeah. uh, fiction? This is fiction. Yes. This is regular price, twenty dollars ninety nine. Join up from Audible right now, and you'll get it for, for for free. Or if you're a member, you can get it for seven dollars fifty. All right, that's the way to go. And if you want to get a free book, you can go to Aussie Tech. He 
what is it? AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage. And there's still, there is a banner on the front. You can click on that, join up, get the free book when you join up. So that's um, – did you have a – I've got a grab. A grab. Yes, please. I've got a grab. Grab me. Here we go. Any impacts arriving in a span of 10 seconds. They could see the flashes of the explosions reflected on the wall opposite the doorway. A closest round impacted about 100 feet away. Close enough that shock waves could be felt. As the rounds came in, Andy Lane said a silent prayer. He knew that only a direct hit would endanger him, but it was still unnerving since he had less than a month left in country. That may be all she wrote, sir, said one of the lieutenants dryly. Lane agreed. You're probably right. Just another shoot and scoot deal. There you go. Yeah, it's very good. Yes. I'm actually going to get that one. Hmm. Yeah, so so you just go through... Marathon Steve Jobs book, I'll get it. Oh, yeah. Well, what, what will Steve Jobs, 25 hours? This is only 13 hours and 41 minutes. Let me ask you, Mr. 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 Granger. Yes. Um, how far are you into it? Uh, same spot as last week. Um, what, I think 19, when he founded the company in 1977? Uh, no, we've just met uh, Wozniak. And yeah, okay, 1978. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Things things move slow up here. Oh, dude, come on, listen up. Oh, look, 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 practice, what you, practice what you preach, my boy. When do you listen to it? By the just quietly. When I listen to it in the car. Well, see, I don't have a commute. So well, you know what? So I know, and I've done this before. I sometimes just go for a drive. Right. I'll tell my wife up the road i've got some things that i need to get some chores i need to run yep and i'll go for a drive and i'll sit in the park and listen to it yeah yeah serenity up now that sounds serenity right. now mm. or insanity later yeah, that's right all right so that's good so yeah that eric's uh tip of the week for audible is survivors a novel of the coming collapse uh get the free get your free credit aussietechheads.com.au click on the link all right moving on i think um we got we got Joseph on the line. If he comes through, uh, get the free. Hey. Oh, Joseph, you have to turn your um, stream down, please. All right, we'll come back to you. Okay. We, um, we got, we got Hang on, here we go. If he comes through, Hang uh, on. Get the here we go. Still, oh, I can Joseph, still hear it. Turn your um, still hear it. Down, All right, is that is that right? Turn my stream on. No, I think we're right now. Yes, how you going? Cool, thanks. Oh, that's good. Um, you got your car yet? Uh, yep, I got the car um, last Friday. Oh, nice. Now, just for for everyone who doesn't remember, what type of car, and for me as well, what type of car was it? It's a Mitsubishi iMeve, and I'm also on page three on the Australian. Oh, page three on the Australian. Oh, I don't know if I can get that up, yep. actually. Is it on are the internet? On page three for buying, are you on page three for buying the car or on page three for the electricity bill that you had to pay? <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> So what was the model again? Sorry, I just want to get up on the web page and we'll show you. It's, it's, a, it's a Mitsubishi iMeve. How do you spell that? I? I, I, small I dash M-I-E-V. All right, let's see if we can get a picture of that up. Um, so you're on the, in the paper, Australian, in the, in the newspaper? The Australian, yep, the national paper. Nice work. Now, just have, days. I just have a picture of this up here. And so you took delivery of this on Friday. And, yep. uh, and how does it go? Um, it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty zippy, I believe. And, um, uh, well, um, it's got, basically, if you travel at 90 k's per hour, you've got a range of about 100 um, kilometers, kilometers. And, mm. but there's, there are these two guys in Hungary, and they were traveling around at 50 k's, and they supposedly set a record of uh, 220 k's. Jeez, that's pretty fast. 220 yeah. k's. No, no, no. I mean, no, I mean, not 220 k's. I mean, 220 oh, oh, kilometers, right. 50 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, that's not too bad. So, uh, did it? When you got it, was it? Did it, did it come charged? Uh, harsh. Yeah. Well, partial. Yeah, ha partially because the funny thing was on Wednesday when I took delivery, I, it had the um, SRS fault light came on. And yep. so I did a loop of the um, the area and, and sent it back basically to them. And also it was a blessing in disguise because the um, the tinting wasn't quite uh, well, they had to cure it for 24 hours. So oh. it was good because then I wasn't tempted to wind down the windows or anything 
Yeah, right. and and also I hadn't I hadn't um, had my 15 amp power sockets installed until the Friday. So yeah. basically, you got to be careful what you wish for because I wish that you know it was going to be drawn out a bit. So and I and I got it on Friday, and that was the day that I had my um, the power points installed, the 15 amp ones anyway. Yeah, and so yeah, it was all it was good. You're right, and so so you haven't driven it too much. Um, no, I have already clocked up. I think about what's it? Um, I think it's almost. Um, I think I saw it just now, uh, 600 k's or something. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and uh, so, how many? That, well, that's about what five charges to do that. Uh, yeah, roughly that. Because I've been going up and down, uh, like to Fremantle and back. Because in Fremantle, that's about a round trip of around, um, say, uh, 100 k's. Mm. And I've uh, basically you, at Fremantle, you can charge and park for free for up to 12 hours. Or for electric vehicles, right. that's part of their their um, Fremantle city of Fremantle's um, sort of promotion of expensive. electric vehicles. Um, sure yeah, don't. yeah. So, sorry, Eric. What was that? No, so I don't think we have that in Sydney. Park for free. No, the electric charger. We, I, we, I'm going to have to bloody just knock on the door and say, "Hey, buddy, can I borrow your PowerPoint?" Yeah, well, you have to have a 15 but, amp. Yeah. Right. So is that we don't have it. So fifteen amp is that is that like is that like three phase or something? No, no, it's a single phase, but it needs a it's a it's a bigger you know and the earth socket the earth p, um, pin is longer. Right. Yeah, so it's mainly for I think you use them you use fifteen amps on builders sites and stuff. So you can't just yeah, rock up. But use also, them in uh, speaking, caravan parks and welders as yep, well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Although speaking of which, ne- next year they're gonna. Uh, Mr. Bishi supposedly is going to be bringing out a 10 amp charger so that it'll be more suitable for general people to use at home. They don't have to convert or get extra power points put into their houses and stuff. And power steering and all the all the mod cons. Uh, actually, it's a bit of a. Oh, I'm, I'm using the word actually now again. <laughs> yeah. I'll stop that. <laughs> but the thing is, um, it's a bit of a. It's. I would suggest that most people wait for the Nissan Leaf because it's more. You've got to get more for your money. Mm. Uh, because this is pretty basic and it's also pretty light. I find it because we had a, a bit of a couple of storms come through on the weekend, and I, that's, you just find it a bit like skittish. But oh. according to one of my um, colleagues at work, she says that her Corolla or whatever, uh, or her small car also does that anyway. So it's not possibly that's just normal mm. um, because we had really heavy storms and stuff over the weekend, the past weekend in Perth. Yeah, right, right. So so did you find like so yeah, so the weight of it, yeah, so it's really light on the on the road. Yeah, and the, the other thing is the front wheels are only one fifty five um sizes and the rear wheels are one seventy five. So the the front wheels are really really um narrow, similar to the smart the smart smart cars. Right. Although the smart cars I was in Fremantle the other day and the smart cars, the uh, front wheels I think are one fifty fives I'm sorry, one seventy fives and the rears are one ninety fives. Okay. And uh, Will, did you have yeah. any questions for Joseph? I was just going to say they, they put those tyres on them, that size to cut down on rolling resistance and also to cut down on, on uh, noise because obviously yep, with the electric right. vehicle, they're so quiet in the ambient noise. Even things like uh, mirrors have to be designed a proper shape so the wind doesn't cavitate and uh, windscreen washers have windscreen wiper motors have to be designed especially to be quiet. Mm-hmm. So there's actually more than just throwing an electric motor into them. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, I, I don't know if uh, me and you could fit in the back there, Will. Do you reckon we'd fit in there? Yeah, it'd be a bit tight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drive from the back seat. Yeah. yeah. Is is the I mean, if is that the one that's got the solar panel in the on the back quarter of the roof to run things like the uh, air conditioner and that when you're sitting at traffic lights? Uh, no, that's the um, well. The Prius has that, but the that one is the I think that's the um, the Leaf has that option. Oh, okay. And, that's the life, yeah. and, and the other thing is, um, the guys, the Hungarian guys, pump their tires up to 41 psi, which is 2.8 yep. bar. But um, the recommended one in the in the manual says um, 2.5 bar, which is 36 psi. But funny thing is, uh, when I got the car, I checked my tires, and the the, the dealership had already pumped the rear tires to 41. So I need to get back to the um, service department to check to see whether you can run it at 41 or whatever. Yeah. yeah, you can run them at 40 without a problem. Same as on a normal car, you can run them at 40 um, and it will reduce your rolling resistance. So theoretically, you know, help with your economy. And what colour did you get? Well, I got the um, grey. I didn't want to be... I, I was going to go for the pink one, 
because I've got a P credit uh, a debit card anyway. But I thought that yeah, that one there, right there, and yeah, that would be really standing up. It's supposed to be a girly color though. Well, yeah, I think. But that one's. Yeah, is that but the? But that one has. Yeah, sorry. That one it? had um. That one that sorry. That one's got a pearlescent. It's so that's probably. I mean, that's the real like probably also the, all those. I don't know, hoons and stuff, they would also go for possibly that one because it's pearlescent, um, it's pearlescent um, metal, yeah. um, metallic yeah. paint. Yeah, right. Yeah, good stuff. Good work. All right, yeah, that sounds good, uh, Joseph. So you're happy with the purchase? Um, yep, so far, so so far, so good. And I, well, I was contacted by the um, Australian, uh, because I'm, I sort of joined the... Um, Australian Electrical Vehicle Association, Perth branch, the other, on, on Tuesday, I went to their regular, um, because they have uh, meetings every Tuesday yeah. at UWA, which is the University of Western Australia. And basically, um, because I'm, I'm trying to get the, the quick, uh, uh, some sort of, they've got these charge points around around Perth for the WA EV trial thing. And I was just trying to get, get myself fast tracked, but I didn't, uh, yeah. I wasn't successful in that. Right. But anyway, the, um, the guy sort of, I'm a bit, um, semi annoyed with the guy because he passed on my phone number to um, the Australian without even contacting me. Oh, so okay. that's a bit of a Google no no a there. So yeah. yes. so, so but anyway the, the lady at the Australian um, she sort of said, I hope you don't mind but the guy passed your phone phone on to me. But I could have always said that I didn't want to proceed or whatever. It's, it's perfect. But anyway, it all has proceeded now. So I'm I'm pretty famous now and yeah. I also was just about half an hour ago I was on six PR which is the local radio station. Nice, and, um, nice. But then, but then there was this guy going the typical, you know, the naysayers going on about how you're you're running your car on coal and right. we need more figures on the CO2 and stuff. Basically, they just that was going to be my question. They, he has to do more research what? himself about yeah. what what's going on because the guy on um, there's this YouTube site called Fully Charged with the guy from uh, Red Dwarf, the actor called Robert Llewellyn. Yeah, he's got a Robert big chance for electric vehicles and stuff. Yeah, right, yeah. Mm. Well, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the science behind it all either, but from, from my, in my little brain, I think electric cars have got to be better than petrol cars. What, my yeah, only question was, what does it actually cost efficiency? to charge? Like, to, as you're saying, exactly. you've been doing almost full charges, so what's that work out to? I think it's about $6 per, um, per charge for 100, you know, the, a full eight-hour eight charge. I think it costs around, I reckon, uh, according to my calculations, around $6. According to Is the RXC piece? site, it says it's about one to two cents per kilometer versus petrol, yep. which is eight to nine cents. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So one, yeah, one that's, big that's thing, one big thing though, I mean... Okay, that, arguments sorry. can be made that yes, you are using coal-fired power, but the thing is, you're using power that's in the grid anyway, so it's not like you're upping demand. I mean, if there was ten thousand of those things on the roads, then maybe um, it's not your fault that Australia is so far behind in power options. Um, there is a one. There is one. There was one big concern. Basically, is that. If everybody started turning on their um, electric, I mean, charging the electric vehicles around between four to eight at Perth time, that's when also, especially in summer, um, that's when everybody turns on their air conditioners, and so that will put a mm. mega, mega um, could possibly put a mega strain on the um, grid. On the grid, but, yeah. uh, So basically, the suggestion is to to turn on your to charge your vehicle after like nine o'clock or something. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, that's where these charging stations are going to come in that are going to be just basically lined with solar panels anyway. So all the power eventually that will be going into them will all be renewable energy anyway. So mm. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Yeah, good work. Yep, you're right there. Yep, yeah. you're right there because in Singapore, they've got this company called Green Lots because this guy mm. with the Electric um, Association, they're exactly what you're saying there um, is that, um, sorry, what was your name again? Sorry. Will. Will. Yeah, Will. Oh, Will. That's right, Will. Yeah, um, basically, Will, in, in, in Singapore, the, the guys, they've got these um, charging, they've got these panels on top of these um, carport thingies. Not really carport, but you know, public carport thingies, and they charge the um, electric vehicles from there. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Right. yeah, good stuff. All right, thanks, Joseph, for telling us about that. And um, I might even do a, a look in the uh, Australian online, see if we can see a picture of you. I tried that and I couldn't find Not anything. There. Oh, what's <laughs> then again, you've got to pay for it now. So. Oh, you get a 30 day free trial. <laughs> All right. I th did have. Is it 90 days? Oh, was it 90? 30 or 90? 
something like I that. I don't care. I'm not going to sign up for it because I'm not going to buy it, so there's no point. Mm. <laughs> Right. Somehow, somehow I've managed to get it, um, a copy of it. Um, I mean, I didn't have, because I'm not signed to the Australian, but somehow I managed to get a copy of it. I mean, sometimes you keep on trying it, somehow it pops up. Sometimes, oh, yes, last night anyway, you did. I think you can get three, what, three pages a day or something, and some tricky things. You clear your cache out of, you clear your cookies and you can go again or something, but yeah, you just, you just move on to something else. <laughs> something yep. else. That's right. All right. Good on you, Joseph. Thanks for that. No worries. We'll, we'll talk to you again soon. Yep, cool. I'll have okay. to get you on uh, Talk Back Tech and get a bit more detail about it. Yep, no worries. All right. Well, you guys can organise that later. And, uh, yeah, thanks again, Joseph. <laughs> See you later. Okay, okay, okay. Ta-da. All right, yeah, that sounds interesting, the little electric cars. Yes, I've only been in a hybrid one myself. Um, but, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, uh, where are we up to? Have we got any more stories? Um... Uh, yeah, there's a, there's Eric. a couple. Um, oh, yeah, Will. I'm, well, I've got one. Speaking of sort of, I was going to say, so, well, we're sort of talking about uh, eco-friendly sort Stuff. of things. Yeah. Um, over in the US, they're actually starting to fly on biofuel now. Um, they're basically using an algae-based biofuel, uh, which is, sorry? Pro-jam. Yeah, which is um, developed in San Francisco to be used. I mean, they're using it in in cars and things like that as it is, but they had to undergo huge amounts of um, of testing, as you can imagine, to put it into a plane. Uh, and the biggest problem with any ethanol-based fuel is that ethanol is inherently... Um, hydroscopic so it absorbs moisture very easily so of course once you add a hot fuel tank climbed out of the tube where it's cold of course you're going to get condensation so um, a lot of their testing was required to make sure that that didn't happen but at the end of the, the process once it went through they're mixing it currently 40% um, to 60% of the petroleum based fuel and they're running it through a 737 which oh. hasn't re doesn't require any modifications. So, well, over over across the pond in the UK, researchers research into producing electricity from urine. I don't know if you yep. saw that one, but it's been carried out by scientists at the University of West <laughs> of England in Bristol. Now, it is claimed the publication of a research paper into the validity of urine as a fuel for microbial fuel cells is a world first. They say tests have produced small amounts of energy, but more research could produce useful levels of power. So apparently the way it works is the bacteria, the bacteria, now these are some big words here, so the bacteria <laughs> anaerobically, uh, that means without oxygen apparently, uh, respire just like any other living organism and the process gives off electrons. These electrons are then passed through an electrode and a measure of electricity is generated. Bacteria is fed, bacteria feed on the urine which they effectively use as fuel to continue to breathe and give off electrons. My goodness. Urine is chemically rich in substances favorable to MFC, says Dr. Lurapoulos. Wow. There you go. How's that? So next time you, you fire up your TV, yeah, take a pee. <laughs> and back. <laughs> That's right. Um, I mean, it's not surprising, really. Any, you know, any natural... Any naturally occurring product has those sort of properties, so it's just, I guess, finding something that's mm. usable. Mm. <laughs> Did you have any stories, Eric? I thought we might talk about the. Uh, we were talking about urine. Let's talk about fire. Okay. Single fire. Yes. Amazon's fire doesn't go on sale until next week. But significant. Significant numbers of potential tablet buyers already consider it a worthy alternative. Apple's tablet has seen many competitors come and go, or come and go and come and go, and even those which have remained have scant share compared to the iPad, which has sold 26 million since April 2010. That's a lot. That's a lot, isn't it? And owns a staggering 75% of the tablet market. I thought it would be more than that, actually. Yeah. Amazon would extend e-ink e-reader experience but none in actual computers may seem like an unlikely giant killer well, however 37 percent in the survey said they were they would they would they would buy it so 
actually, I can't wait for it to get here. I'm going to get one. Yeah, yeah, Kindle yeah. Fire. So what? Why? Why? <laughs> just... Why? Well, it's sort of like a to me anyway. And look, everyone has a different interpretation on on what this thing will do for them. It's it's obviously I've got an old Kindle, you know, the original ones, right, the old yeah. uh, e Kindle. Yeah, quite easy to read. So to me, it's a crossover between a tablet and a reader. Because I, with the iPad, um, it's not even though you can read books on it, it's not as nice a non, it's not as a nice a reading experience as the Kindle. Mm. So I um, think well, and I'll wait before I buy it. I'll do all the research and get some. You know, the reviews will start coming out, etc. Once it gets released in the states, and to me, it's a crossover between you know, read on it now properly. Plus, it's going to act as a tablet as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I, uh, uh, so plus it's small. It's small. Yeah, and it's only it's only two hundred bucks. Well, yeah. that's why I'm just looking at the specs now, and the specs aren't as good as my ZTE pad that I have, and it's only a hundred. So, is that out yeah. one hundred outright or with a plan? No, that's hundred outright. A ZTE pad costs you a hundred dollars outright. Yeah. Where from? Back at a truck.com? <laughs> no, Optus. No, that's the Pendo pad. Um, Optus stopped selling them, so they just offered them really cheap. Oh, really? When was all this oh, happening? Because they've got, they got the new, that's the ZTE V9 pad. They've got the new one coming out, so they basically just ditched the old one, and that's why you can get one through Pendo, uh, through uh, Dodo. Mm. Is it 7 inch? Is that the one? 7 inch touchscreen? Yep. Yeah, right. Right. Well, Moby City is sending, selling them for two ninety nine. Yeah, you probably can't get them at a hundred anymore because I'd say all the wholesalers have <laughs> bought yeah. them out. But I mean, they are a hundred dollar tablet. All right, so that's that's the thing. Like, what what makes this Amazon tablet any different to a normal one hundred or two hundred dollar tablet? The hardware specs aren't any different. That's what I mean. Okay, you get. Um, the Kindle app pre-installed and the only other thing you get is free cloud storage for all the Amazon content. But I think you get that now anyway. So, uh, yeah, look, I'm going to, I don't know the actual specs yet. Um, you know what it is though with the, you get, it's the content you can get with Amazon, all their move, their movies, their apps, their games, the music. Um, yeah, we still got to pay for it. Oh, you still got to pay for it. But and you get that, the Kindle app on any Android device. So same with the iPad, but it's not as the e-ink thing. Well, it's not e ink. It's not e ink. The last e ink was the the Kindle 3G. Oh, sorry, the Kindle DX was the last e ink screen, and it's three hundred and eighty bucks. Um, and they're all, they're the new e-ink. one's not e ink. Oh, I think it is. I'm no, it's not. The new one's just a normal LCD screen. I think it's LCD because yeah, it's, it's color, isn't it? I think. It's, yeah. If you want to read a book, you can convert. There's something that it comes out in. Oh, okay. No, it just uh, inverts the, the screen. Well, That's why you can only use it for eight hours for reading a book now. Eight hours continuous reading or seven hours video playback. We'll, we'll soon find out. Right. We'll soon find out when Eric gets it. You'll tell us. All right, so I'll go. I'll go. so just quickly, I think um, I think Joseph might have forgot something. Did you forget something, Joseph? No, not there? Oh, no, oh, nothing. Oh, okay, sorry. I saw you come back on and I thought, oh, you must have forgot something. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. Um, what are we up to? Internet Explorer's share of web traffic drops below 50%. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that IE is now, in its market share is now 50, is less than 50%. About time, too. It be less. Yeah, it should <laughs> be less. It's a piece of garbage. Yeah, well, it's not the best in the world. But I remember, I remember those days when it was up to like... Um, Oh, what was it? It was like 90, 90%. Yeah, but that's only because that's only because Microsoft wrote accidental code into Windows that wouldn't allow anything else to run. Yeah. <laughs> Serves themselves right. But um, uh, as oh, yeah. And then the antitrust uh, lawsuit started and they, you know, good one, good one, Microsoft. As of October, Firefox is the second most popular web browser, accounting for 21.2%. That's surprising because that's a pig too. It is a pig. Mm. But what does it for Firefox? What does it for Firefox is all the add-ons. Yes, that's right, all the add-ons. But Chrome Which is Chrome is slowly getting, but slowly getting. <laughs> well, look, my uh, at my browser of choice is Chrome. I'm finding yeah. these days. 
I use it all the time on Mac and PC. Oh, look. It, yeah, it's finally got it, stable on Mac. Oh, it flies on the Mac. It is oh, better it than Safari on the Mac. Oh, it is. Because, oh, so which is funny because they're the both based on WebKit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. what was My, that? The rating on web browsers is I, from worst to best, i.e., is the worst. Oprah's then it's the worst. Firefox, then it's Safari, and then Chrome B is number one. No, Oprah's the worst. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> it doesn't even make a top five. <laughs> yeah, so 20, uh, Firefox is second, Google Chrome is third, and Safari. So Google Chrome 16.6 and Safari 8.72. Uh, Chrome... So still a big jump even in there. Like, okay, it's only 16 versus 8%, but Chrome's still twice as mm. popular. But Chrome, which recently celebrated its third birthday, experienced the most expansion in October, increasing ex its share of the desktop market 1.42%. Safari, the default browser for iPhone and iPad, continues to increase its dominance over the mobile web, gaining 6.58% of the market, which I would suggest that uh, Safari would be the dominant, would be, yeah, well, that's what it says, isn't it? It is the dominant mobile browser. Because mm. I, I use it on the iPad because... I well, even on, even, you've only got the, on the Android device, you've got the default Android browser, which I think is WebKit-based anyway, so it probably identifies as Safari. And then you've got um, Skyfire and Op Opera and all the other ones on top of that. Yeah. But yeah. So you're probably identifying half the Android devices as Safari as well. Mm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Chrome for me, look, there, there's certain things now, certain pages that I just automatically load up with the, all three browsers, quite honestly. Uh, some, some things I notice just work better in Explorer, so I know just to open that page in Explorer. Uh, some things I know better work in Firefox, and I know just to open in Firefox. Um, but uh, but by far the best is Chrome for me, for mine, uh, just as day to day. It's fast. Snappy. Unless you need to uh, pay your rego on the Queensland Transport website, you must use um, Netscape Navigator Gold version four what? or Internet Explorer three point six. Oh, is that what it says? You know, a lot of government departments will not, will not support anything but Internet Explorer. Yes. And some yeah. of them are down to 3.6. Others, you know, they've gone as high up as, as version Five. 6. Woohoo. Mm, yep, yep. Uh, but, yeah. Look, I know. Pay... I, I know there's some... <laughs> I, I know there's... I know there's some government departments out there still using the IE6 because I went in there one day and I, look, I looked on the screen yeah. and went, IE6, you're kidding yeah, me. Yeah, they're all, they're, they're all running Windows 95. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe there might be some, but the I think at least XP isn't it these days. <laughs> well, I'm still running NT4. A lot of the ones I've seen are still NT4, yeah, um, really especially in, in the NT4 Queensland government. Was actually, a very good system. It was. And you it's, know what else? You know what else I like? Windows 2000 was also very good. Yeah, I mean it was well. It was based on the NT kernel, not on the yeah. not on the but, XP uh, kernel. I didn't like Windows ME. That was a piece of crap. Oh, that was two, three, as well. I think Windows 2000 was better than Windows XP. See, I loved ME. I didn't like ME. I used to love it. Yeah, I didn't like it. I had it. I didn't like it. But anyway, were you one of the tens of thousands of Australians that uh, lined up outside a video shop through the week? Are you kidding me? Are you, hey. ser are you serious? No, why would I do that? Uh, well, actually, yes, because the video shop down the road was closing and they had $2 DVDs for sale. Right. There wouldn't be any TV <laughs> shop closing. They're all bloody closing. So, yes, I did line up out the front. <laughs> Tens of thousands of people queued at video game stores across the country on Monday to be in line for the fastest selling game, Australian's billion-dollar-a-year billion video game industry, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, can I be the first? Uh, is expected to internationally outsell the current two record holders, also from the Call of Duty series last year. In Australia, video games generated $1.7 compared with $1.2 billion for DVD, Blu-ray sales, and $1.1 for cinema. That's huge. So you guys out there, you just love your games, don't you? Uh, online sales of video oh, games. Oh, jeez. Uh, I don't know. DT. Yeah, look, look. I've, I went out. Where did I? I, haven't got, I can't show it to you because it's uh, somewhere else. But my first game I bought for the Xbox, I bought Wolfenstein. And it's not too bad. I've played it once. <laughs> well done. Yeah, thanks. But um, I don't know. You know, like I don't. I, look, would I? I can't. I couldn't see myself ever lining up at midnight to get a game. 
Oh, uh, although I, I like know. games. I just couldn't... Even when I used to game when I was younger and I was at uni, I would never line up. No. Like, no it's not as if you're gonna, they're going to run out, is it? Well, I suppose they might if it's super-duper popular. But, um, but I mean, like, they're only DVDs. That there's, you know, Diamond a dozen. Actually, I have to admit, I did do that when Duke 3D came out. I lined up for that. Look, I lined up for Derby Norma for Windows 95, but that was the last time. <laughs> <laughs> In France, bandits held up two delivery trucks transporting the game to stores and stole thousands of copies worth one million, million dollars. So there you go. There to you do go. what with? Oh, <laughs> play? I don't know. <laughs> they're all serial coded, so then again, I know exactly which ones they've taken. And um, Eric, you got any more stories? Yes, I have. No, that Telstra <laughs> had the least amount of complaints Ooh. in 2010, 2011. And guess who had the most? Oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on, let me put my brain surgery cap on. <laughs> Would it be three? Vodafone. Vodafone. Oh. 222% increase. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Telstra dropped 3.2%. The worst performer, Vodafone Hutchison. And I think second was uh, Optus. That's yeah, no surprise right. either. Yeah. What were the... Uh, does... I don't, look, look, this is how I feel about this. I don't like banging on about Telstra. But credit where credit's due. When they were crap a few years ago... I abandoned them and told them that they were crap and they were too expensive and their service was shocking and their and their you know infrastructure was garbage and I tell everyone I wanted to listen. But yeah. when they turn it around, I'm happy to tell people that they're different now and they are. And yeah. Everything I've got, telecommunications wise, uh, whether it be internet or phone or iPhone or whatever you want to, you know, whatever cable, ADSL, all with. I haven't got one account that. Not with Telstra. Yeah, yeah. Look, I agree that they are the best at the moment. Yeah, but that's interesting. That is interesting. Um, oh, yes, I am still here. And what's what's Will doing? He, he's fallen off his chair. Did you have any more stories, Eric? He's off the <laughs> wagon. No, my. I just kicked my microphone out. <laughs> there he is. That's where he used to be. <laughs> um, Eric, uh, did you have any more? What's going on? Why is that that? All right. Well, I've got right. one. Now my Last camera's story. falling Last out too. For me. Last story for Eric. Last story for me. Steve Jobs has been nominated for Time Magazine Person of the Year. Mm, there you go. And if he wins, the only person that's won it posthumously, and he might he might get it. Last year it was um, Mark Zuckerberg, which I reckon was a bit of a joke. Mm. <laughs> it's only because there's a movie made about him. Yeah, exactly. The movie came out. He's the person of the year. He'd be what, odds on. The, on, the, on the back page, would it be Thief of the Year? Would that be on the back? Mm. Stealing, stealing I don't think they can say that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think uh, Steve Jobs you could be on the money. Oh, why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it be? Who else is there? Why would? You know. Well, who was Steve Ballmer? Don't think so. <laughs> Eric Ballmer. Vodafone CEO. <laughs> no. Oh, what about Mark Mark Burris from Celebrity Apprentice? No, there, no, no, no. <laughs> Demi Hines, put her person of the year. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, and uh, my, Will, have you got any last stories? Uh, got a couple more quick ones. Um, the whole battle between Apple and uh, and Samsung is still raging wildly. Um, now, Apple's forced to reveal their telco contracts. If they don't do it by noon tomorrow, as requested by Samsung, um, they're going to have to... Uh, hand over non-redacted copies for. What do you mean? Their, what, uh, what does that viruses? mean? Show them their oh, yeah. telco contracts. Basically, because they have they had signed contracts with Telstra, Optus, uh, Vodafone, and someone else. Where is it? Uh, Vodafone, Telstra, Optus. Yeah, it doesn't anyone. Like every... um, they are saying that Samsung saying that they were exclusivity exclusivity contracts. Um, so that right. they weren't allowed to sell anything else, which is against trade practices. So, what, what, so Vodafone was say, do that. say Vodafone wasn't allowed to sell anything else but an iPhone. Pretty much, I think this yeah. Samsung are grasping at straws there because if you go to any Vodafone store, or any Telstra store, they're obviously selling other things. Yeah, there's other, and things. they're constantly advertising HTC this, Android that. I think Samsung are just, mm. you know, get off it. 
Yeah. Well, that's why they want them to hand over to see. But uh, the other thing that Apple's having trouble with at the moment is China wants, um, obviously, China China Mobile has 628 million subscribers and Apple wants to obviously get in bed with them and China Mobile, China Mobile said, mm. yes, no worries, but you have to pay us cash. Basically, they want a 20% cut of what comes through the Apple Store yeah, um, right. as well as the... Negotiate with. Uh, <laughs> just tell them to go away. I don't know. Do you think so, that it could, it could get to a stage where Apple could get a bit too big for its boots in some places? Yes, and it's going to happen very soon, I think. Well, you know, well, there at the moment they've got the leverage. They can tell people. True. You know, people are knocking on their door saying, "Please, can we have your phone?" Yes. True. True. Uh, yeah, but I think that's. I mean, at the moment they keep doing things like Siri. You know, they keep bringing out little things. The Android apps, there is an Android app called um, Lacey. A little much, it's not that much behind the Apple apps. So, a lot of the Android apps are just as good, but Android, because it's so fragmented, they don't know how to market what they're Well, see, to that's changing now too, because now that Android 3 and 4 is coming out, um, the market's going to get a lot tighter. So, I think that's what I'm saying. Coming in the near future, they're getting organized now and I think they're actually going to be a threat to Apple. And also Google now has st- has said that they're going to stand behind any ma- any device manufacturer that puts, or any, any um, reseller basically, who's putting Android onto their device. If they uh, face a lawsuit with anybody, Google's actually going to stand behind them mm. now. So that's going to stop a lot of this little petty should stand behind them. Yeah. So that's going to stop a lot of this little petty stuff that's going on. Yeah. And uh, my last story for my last story for the night and for the week is um, I don't know if you guys would remember, probably not, but John Opel. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. He was a long time, long time IBM in, uh, chief. Yeah, IBM. Uh, he was president from 1974 to 1983 at IBM, CEO from 81 to 85, uh, navigating the company safely through a number of minefields, including the advent of the PC and a long U.S. antitrust inve- uh, investigation. Yes, those antitrusts were alive back then. He was a great mm-hmm. leader, recalls Patrick Toole, a longtime IBM executive who joined the company in 1960. He was good with customers and colleagues. Everyone trusted him. Well, poor old Jono, CEO, IBM, in those years, died. I do have one question. November on that three. Uh, screen grab you just put up there. Yes. What's it say on the top right? I've got no idea. What that? What, why? What is it? <laughs> because well, I saw the first thing that grabbed my eye was a uh, a uh, African American uh, <laughs> standing half naked in the top corner okay, of the magazine. Well, we'll, we'll have a look. <laughs> but but just to uh, just to um, just to finish off. I yeah. just got a thing in the chat. The chat just said someone the rumor. It's just said that um, everyone's dropping in and out, the, the volume, just the audio. All right, we're just about finished. There it goes. It's a picture of Eddie Murphy. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, John O'Pell, long-time IBM, uh, IBM chief, rest in peace. November 3rd, 2011, he was 86 years old. All right, mm-hmm. and so that's the end of the show. Don't forget, tomorrow, Friday, the 11th of the 11th at 11 a.m. Yes, it is... Uh, it is... Um, Remembrance Day. So, everyone, 11 o'clock, stand up. Minute silence. Less. That's right, Les. Unless you're here. driving, in which case, just, you know, be careful. Well, be prepared and be on the side of the road. <laughs> but uh, Don't have a minute of silence and close your eyes if you're driving. <laughs> no, that's right. But it is Remembrance Day, and we take time to remember those that have fallen for the... For the... the, um, the priv- there, for the priv- privilege of our freedom. All right. Why is it that... Um, Everybody remembers the Melbourne Cup, but everybody forgets in Remembrance Day. Because our priorities are all screwed up. <laughs> That's why. They, they, get started. they nearly were all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, all be singing a, you'd all be goose-stepping down to George Street if it wasn't for the blokes that died. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, so, all right, so that's the end of the show. Thanks, boys. Uh, you can contact uh, Glenn, Eric, or Will at Glenn, Eric, or Will at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Uh, you can find me on the Twitter at AussieTechHeads, Eric at Eric Franco, 
and Will at Mr. Tomkinson. Don't forget the Aussie Tech Heads Google page, or whatever they call it. That seems so simple, doesn't it? Google page. Um, also, the Facebook page. There is a Facebook page. And also the YouTube. Can we, um, can we have a look at the video on the YouTube? We want to get more hits. More hits, please. And don't forget also Talk Back Tech and the Android shows are coming back, hopefully this Tuesday, if everything goes according to plan. All right, so you can you can have a look for those. Look for Will uh, on Tuesday. But until next week, and Aussie Tech Heads, it's the Aussie Tech Heads signing out. See you next week. Ta-da. Good See morning. you later. See you guys.